everybody, it's Miss Audrey from the Fairfield County District Library and I'm at our downtown location in Maine and we are going to do some art, yay! Today we are making salt dough. It's super easy and super fun. All you need are three ingredients and a couple things to put your salt dough in. So you're gonna start with a bowl. I think a bigger bowl is better because you have more room to mix and then you need some water, some flour and some salt. So we're going to start with a cup of flour. So this is a cup measure. Kind of chunks at the bottom there. And it doesn't have to be an exact measurement. This is not an exact science. So you don't have to level it off or anything like that. So a cup of flour, and then you need a cup of salt. As always, talk to your grown-ups before you raid the pantry to make sure that they don't need that flour or that salt for something else later. Nothing makes your parents grumpier than having to do a last minute grocery shopping run because they thought they had something in the pantry. There we go cup of salt and then I measured it out earlier this is half a cup of water so it's equal amounts of flour and salt and then half that much water and then you can mix this with a spoon but I think that just takes a lot longer so I'm just going to use my hands if you have any rings you're gonna want to take them off if you've got long sleeves or bracelets take them off or push them up but then just get in there with your hands and stir and mix it up. It makes a really dry, gritty sort of a dough. It takes a minute. It feels really cool on your hands. You'll know it's done when it starts sticking together. And it really only takes a few moments. My hands might be a little bit bigger than yours, so it might go slightly faster for me than for you watching at home. But there you go. When it comes away cleanly from the bowl like that, you know you're done. And like I said, it feels pretty dry and it feels pretty gritty. It's a cool sensory experience too. If you like feeling different kinds of things with your hands, it feels pretty cool. Almost sort of reminds me of sand at the beach. So once you make it to this stage, there's all sorts of fun things you can do with it, like accidentally flick it onto your floor. I'm very sorry, maintenance department. I'll try to pick that up. Um, you can mix stuff in with it like cinnamon or other spices that make it smell really nice. You can mold it and shape it like you would with Play-Doh. You can pinch it into bowls um, or pots or really pretty much anything you do with any other dough you can do with your salt dough. Here, let me show you some examples of some projects that I made the other day. It's Thursday now when we're filming this and I made these on Monday. I left them to air dry and they're not done drying yet. The thicker you make them, the longer they take to dry. Just to warn you, if you leave them to air dry, they'll probably take about a week to dry, especially if they're thick. But they are dry enough for me to move around a little bit to show you. So this was the first one I made. And I shaped it to look kind of like a dinosaur footprint. And I mixed in coffee grounds. It smelled really nice when I made it. Even if you don't like the taste of coffee, coffee can smell really nice. It still smells really nice. Actually, it still smells like coffee. And then once I shaped it how I wanted it, I used these cool dinosaur toys to make different tracks all over it. So you can make imprints with leaves or plants or trucks or dinosaurs whatever you like you can 
make little marks in it. Um, then this one, I decided I wanted to make a candlestick holder and I mixed glitter into this one. And then I pressed sequins into it. And some of the sequins have come off and I'm going to have to glue them back on with tacky glue or with um, super glue once it's all done drying. But the glitter part turned out really cool. And then for this last one, I mixed in liquid watercolor. Food coloring would also work, but the trick with food coloring is that it can stain your hands, it can also stain your clothing. The nice thing about liquid watercolor is that it washes off again. But again, you can use whatever you have at home. Just double check with your parents before you use anything, especially if it's something that could stain, because it could also stain countertops. So I split this batch of, uh, you can see it's still wet on the bottom. You can, I, I split this batch of dough into two, two parts and I colored one yellow and one, I was aiming for red, but it came out pink. And I mixed the watercolor in to the two batches and then I swooshed them together to make that little dish there for keys or coins or whatever, like whatever you want to put into it. Um, now, if you don't feel like air drying, you can also try drying them out in your oven if your grown up gives you permission, uh, especially if your grown up agrees to help you with the oven. You can set your oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, thinner projects will take about 45 minutes to an hour to dry out in the oven, but thicker things like something like this would probably take up to two to three hours. Um, so just keep an eye on it. However, something that you've put plastic in or on, you cannot stick in your oven. It would let off really horrible fumes and the plastic would melt. It would not be good for your oven and it would not be good for the people living in your house. Um, so if you put plastic in, do not stick it in your oven. But the other two projects you could stick in your oven. My remaining piece of advice for you for making these projects is if you choose to add anything to your dough to pizzazz it up, start with a little bit, work it in, see if you like the effect, and then you can always add more, whether it's more glitter, more color, more coffee grounds, whatever you like. Um, but start with a little and then keep adding from there because you can always add more in, but you can't take it back out again. All right, guys, I hope you had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun making it. And I hope to see you next time. Our library is closed right now, unfortunately, uh, but we are still doing curbside service. So if you need any help finding books or other cool things, feel free to give us a call at the Youth Services Department and we can help you find some things to pass the time. Thanks for tuning in today and we'll see you later. Bye.